Welcome to All Things What. This is part one of a multi-episode series on wave particle duality, which is the fundamental basis of quantum mechanics. In this episode, we will focus on the double slit experiment and we'll also be talking about these great minds who had some part to play in the evolution of particle physics, which eventually led to the birth of quantum theory. So let us begin. For this, we will have to go back all the way to 1700s, where light was predominantly thought to be part of the Korsberkel theory. What this meant was that light was made up of small, discrete uh, particles, right, and traveling in a straight line. This was firmly believed by Isaac Newton himself. However, in 1801, an English scholar named Thomas Young had set out to challenge this by performing what we call as a double slit experiment. To explain what this experiment is, let's look, take a look at the simple setup and, and set our expectation on how light would behave. In this, we have a, uh, a source of light, a beam of light, that passes through a, uh, uh, the first screen, which has a small slit. And then the second screen is where we can observe uh, as the light passes through. So in this case, light that passes through the slit will correspond to a blob of light right here. Anything that does not will reflect off. Right? And this is exactly what happens. So now let's move on to uh, a variation of this single slit and call it a double slit. So in this case, we have two slits here that are parallel to each other and very close to each other. So as light passes through the same source of light, it will pass through these two slits and anything that does not pass through will just bounce off. And light that passes through will eventually form two blobs of light because they correspond to the two slits. This is our expectation of how light would behave in a double slit. But this is not what happens Thomas Young found out that instead of two blobs of brightness, what forms in the screen is an interference pattern. Imagine dropping two pebbles close to each other in a still lake. We would see ripples from and each ripple interacting with each other. This is exactly what is being seen here. Light has a wave-like property. So when we see the wave when it passes to these two slits, each form their own wave, and these waves interact with each other. So when a crest of one wave collides with a crest of another, it amplifies and forms a constructive interference. Similarly, when a crest of one wave collides with the trough of another wave, they cancel out, and we call this a destructive interference. So in this example here, when they interact, you can form, this is where we would expect light to appear and similarly right up here and wherever they interact we would see a light pattern so in between is where we would see darkness and we would see pattern now this is a, a simplified example this is what we would see in um, in the double slit experiments an interference pattern so light has wave like properties while this was a very convincing experiment by Young, it was hard to shake the beliefs of Newton back in the time. Next, we will briefly talk about our next pioneer, James Clerk Maxwell, a Scottish mathematician who showed that light is actually a propagating wave of both oscillating electric and magnetic field. So in this case, we've got the electric and magnetic perpendicular to each other. It's got a little vector indicating the direction. So this is what led eventually to a definition of the electromagnetic spectrum, where we have visible light between the section which shows a small piece that shows our uh, uh, the wavelength that we can see. And as you get into the smaller wavelengths, you get X-rays, ultraviolet, and as you get further away, uh, or larger wavelength that leads to microwaves, radio TV, etc. 
So here we are in the mid 1800s with Young's double slit experiment and Maxwell's electromagnetic discovery. The world is convinced that light is indeed a wave and Isaac Newton might have been a human after all. Well, stay tuned on all things what for part two of this wave particle duality series where Albert Einstein makes his debut.